An international team of genetic experts examined the ancient DNA extracted from 93 individuals who died over a period of 1,500 years at five different sites in the Middle East. All of them were part of the Canaanite civilization, which thrived for 4,700 years until around 1200 BC. Hey guys, welcome to our channel. In this video, we will talk about an old discovery that is related to DNA, Robinson. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates. Let's get started. Scientists were surprised to find a link between these ancient biblical people and their modern day descendants. The results of this study of Canaanite genetics were announced in May 2020, and it's the largest of its kind undertaken in the Middle East to date. It's an incredible technical achievement that DNA can now be extracted from such ancient bones. But what's equally amazing is what the scientists were able to identify about how Canaanite DNA lives on in a group of people who walk the earth today. Before we get into the detail of the connections revealed by the experts between ancient and modern DNA. According to Live Science, it was written to an ancient king named Yasmadad and unearthed in Syria. It mentions Thebes and Canaanites in the ancient town of Rahizm. Other fascinating texts concern turning the Canaanites. They originate from the ancient Egyptian city of Amarna, built by the pharaoh Akhenaten, who ruled from around 1353 to 1335 BC. The correspondence known as the Amarna letters indicates that there were actually a few kings of separate city-states in the Canaanite lands during this time. Other evidence from ancient Egyptian texts shows that the pharaohs held considerable sway over the Canaanites. It seems that during the period of the Late Bronze Age from around 1550 to 1200 BC, the ancient Egyptian pharaohs ruled over the Canaanite kings. The city of Jericho in Palestine's West Bank was inhabited during the Paleolithic period as early as 10000 years ago in the Paleolithic period was located in the lands that were part of the Canaanite. The Jericho settlement developed over the centuries to become what some experts believe to be the world's first truly urban community. It seems that other cities also appeared, but then failed, perhaps due to population stresses. Whatever the cause of the collapse of these cities, people abandoned them to return to a rural agrarian life. Many centuries passed after the founding of Jericho before the Canaanites established a network of permanent towns and cities in the later centuries. Canaanite society then took a leap forward with the dawn of the Bronze Age 5,000 years ago. The texts already referred to appeared in the Middle Bronze Age about 3,000 years ago when new peoples arrived in Canaan. These included the Amorites, a Semitic people from the Northeast who became the region's dominant population. They were followed by waves of migrants, including the Highlanders and Hurrians from the North and the Egyptians. By the middle of the Bronze Age, the inhabitants of Jericho and other cities in the region had trading links with Egypt, a time of prosperity for the Canaanites that lasted until around 1250 to 1150 BC, when the Bronze Age collapse occurred 2300 years ago, when the Israelites invaded and overwhelmed the Canaanites. Thanks to their geographic position, the incense trade between Arabia, Egypt, and elsewhere ran through Canaanite lands, creating prosperity. The Canaanites were skilled boat builders, and this industry was another key wealth creator. They were also adept navigators, which obviously helped them in their trading. However, perhaps the greatest contribution the Canaanites gave to the world was writing. They invented the first alphabet. Previous to that were scripts, such as the ancient Egyptian texts. However, the Israelites did not immediately overwhelm the Canaanites, who fought to preserve their lands, especially the people of Cain, who clung on to some of their most important cities. Other invaders also arrived in Canaan not long after the Israelites, adding to the pressure on the Canaanites, including the Philistines, who probably arrived from the Mediterranean island of Crete a century after the Israelites. David's forces seized Jerusalem, and from then on, Canaan was no more and became the Israelites' land. In modern times, researchers have worked to reveal the Canaanite story, which brings us back to the groundbreaking study we mentioned at the beginning of this piece, which analyzed DNA from ancient Canaanites' bones. 
the researchers studied 73 pairs of remains from five Canaanite sites and 20 people from four other sites whose DNA had been analyzed in an earlier study. The Hebrew University of Jerusalem collaborated on this recent study. In May 2020, one of the study's co-authors revealed some of its key findings to National Geographic. Molecular evolutionist Lyron Carmel from Jerusalem's Hebrew University noted that individuals from all sites are highly genetically similar. This genetic homogeneity strongly suggests that the Canaanites were a coherent people. Their genetics strongly suggest they were a single group of people with a common culture and genetic makeup. And this genetic research has also solved a puzzle that has puzzled researchers for some time. A 2017 DNA study revealed surprising facts about Middle Easterners living today. UK welcomes trust geneticist Mark Haber. One part of this research project focused on five individuals who had lived in the city of Sidon. This work showed that a startling 90% of modern Lebanese people's genetic material is derived from the ancient Canaanites. And the later study we're dealing with here also reached a momentous conclusion about modern Middle Easterners. This concerns their Canaanite ancestry. National Geographic quoted John Hopkins University archaeologist Glenn Schwartz on the latest finds. Schwartz explained that many of the modern Jews and Arabs who live in the region today share ancestry, but Carmel noted that the research suggests demographic changes in the future. Mary Ellen Buck, an archaeologist and author of the 2019 book The Canaanites, their history and Korean culture from texts and artifacts told National Geographic that one could analyze Canaanite versus Israelite individuals. That's it for today. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. What do you think about this discovery? Tell us in comment section. Please like and share our videos. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates.